Good morning, Rockway Assembly of God. We are glad that you're with us this morning as we gather to worship God, to receive from His Word. Hey, we have some exciting news to tell you about. Uh, next Sunday, July the 5th at 1015, we'll be actually live streaming this service. Now, we won't be here together in person, but the worship team will be here. And of course, Pastor Ken will be bringing the Word. And then on July the 8th, uh, we're going to have another live worship night. Now, that, again, that's not in person. You'll be at home watching it on your phone or on your TV or however you choose to watch at your computer. But that night, again, we'll be taking prayer requests from you and praying for them right in that time together as we worship God together. And then on the weekend of July 11th and 12th, we'll be reopening and having in-person services. And I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel, Rockaway Assembly of God, and there you'll find a video that Pastor Ken has uh, done that kind of outlines what that weekend is going to look like. And please stay tuned for more details about that as things evolve as we get more guidance from the D CDC and our local health officials. So exciting things, stay in touch, follow us on social media as we put out the information you need to know about. Now today at noon, uh, there is a Zoom interest meeting. If you're interested in going to our Scotland missions trip in November, you need to connect up with Pastor Ken through Zoom uh, today at noon. There's a link within our uh, description of this video and you can follow the instructions there and be a part of that to find out what that trip is going to look like. And finally, I wanted to say thank you again, church, for your faithful giving to the work of God here at Rockway Assembly of God, your faithfulness and your tithes and your missions. Some of you have been giving to our compassion funds so that we might minister to the needs of not only our community, but our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for your generosity as you honor God with your financial giving. There on the screen is the details on how you can go about doing that both by mail and through our website. Let's just do that now. Let's prepare our hearts to worship the Lord as we gather together in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity and your goodness that you've displayed unto us. And Lord, I just want to say again, thank you for the faithfulness of your people. I pray that you will bless them as they give both in their finances, in their time, and their energy, Lord God, and also in their prayers for one another. Bless them, Lord God, as we are used by you to show the world around us your love and your grace. Lord, as we gather together now to worship you, to praise you, Lord, receive the praise of your people because you are worthy of it, Lord God. And Lord, prepare our hearts to receive from your word through our pastor as he gives us the word of God that you've laid upon his heart for this day. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, and we praise you for your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The worship team's going to lead us now. Let's join them, shall we?
make the darkness tremble, God. We know that nothing is too big or impossible for you, God. We thank you for meeting us this morning, God. We pray that your blessings be on this service and all of those, everyone that's tuned in this morning, God. And we thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Good morning, Rockaway Assembly of God. It is so good to be together. But today is extra special because it is actually the last day we will be coming to you in this fashion. So next week we'll be live streaming again, as you heard, and then the week after that we will be back together in person. So I am extra happy today, looking forward to next week, our celebration week, looking forward to being together in person. Well, recently we had one of our first rocket launches in almost 10 years in the United States, and Tesla launched a rocket into space. And I was always fascinated about um, just the space flight and being an astronaut. When I was a little kid, I actually wanted to be an astronaut. My, my dad will tell you, he remembers, or any of my family, that I always dreamed about taking a ride to the moon. And it looks like that's actually becoming more likely. Like there's, there's, you can actually book a space travel and stuff like that. But, but it was so cool watching this rocket take off and, and it brought me back to my childhood. I actually got to see a launch in person as a kid. And one of the things that, that you hear when you're watching is, is, you know, they have the different phrases they say throughout the whole procedure. And one of the things is, we have liftoff. We have liftoff, and you hear it come across like, and it sounds, you know, it still sounds the same like it did back then. It's like, we have liftoff. And then the, the thing like, is like off the ground, and it jets out into space. So it got me thinking, what are some of the things that we need to do in our lives so that we could experience liftoff spiritually? It can become very easy to get stuck in a rut or become complacent or not be responsible for our growth the way we should or, or just be distracted by the busyness and the chaos of life or, or in this moment, the season of life can be distracting. But what are some of the things that we need to do to experience spiritual liftoff? And, and that's what I want to talk about this morning. And, and I think there's three things in Psalm 24 that we need to recognize so that we can experience spiritual liftoff, that we can, can get closer to God than we ever have been before, that we could continue to grow. If you have your Bible, turn to Psalm 24. I'm going to read what it says here. It says this, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him, for he laid the earth's foundation of the seas and built it on the ocean depths. <clears throat> Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God their Savior. Such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God of Jacob. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord invincible in battle. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies, he is the King of glory. The first thing we need to do to experience spiritual liftoff is recognize that it's all his. It is all his. The first two verses tell us that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, and that he laid the foundation on the seas and built the ocean depths. So, so what exactly is his? We know that the earth is his, the planet we live on in, uh, is his, and everything in it, everything in it, it's his. Church, it's so easy to lose focus of this, where we think that, that our things belong to us, that our, our time belongs to us, that our kids, that our family, that, that they belong to us. We have a very me-centered culture where it's, it's all about us, it's, all, it's our stuff, it's our rights, it's our, what we're entitled to. They all belong to us. It's contrary to what Jesus modeled, and, and we see that, that Jesus says the thing that we are entitled to as Christians is to lay down our lives so that others can have life, or to pick up our cross and to follow him. 
So everything that we have belongs to God. Our time, our finances, our ability to work, uh, any of the possessions and the talents that we have, even its very foundation belongs to him. Now, I want you to imagine, you know, you are at, uh, you know, a family get-together, and, and you're all talking, like, you know, you have the, the family whoppers, and, you know, some of them get repeated, like, you know, you have one, one relative who, you know, caught a fish that was, like, the size of, of, like, a guppy, you know, it was, like, a couple inches, it was, like, a goldfish, something like that, and, you know, he talks about this whale he caught, and was, like, yeah, you know, I, I caught this whale, but, you know, the people that were there, you don't want to make them feel bad, so you're, like, you know, you actually, like, used his fish as bait, you know, you threw it out there, and, like, you know, because it was so tiny, there, there was that, so imagine, like, you get to the family get-together, and, and Jesus is there, and, and he's, like, yeah, well, you know, I laid the very foundation of the earth, I mean, that's like one of those things that, that you, would, you would be like, huh, no, you didn't. And, 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 and it's true. It's, that's, that's who our God is. That's what this, this passage is trying to convey. And at the end, it refers to our God as a king. And, and that's who our God is, that he laid the very foundations. Or imagine if, if you're, you know, trying to hire an employee and you got a resume that came across your, your desk and, and it says that I, I built the universe. I mean, that would look pretty good on a resume, right? The, the whole I built the universe thing. This, this psalm, it paints David. He paints just a, a very grand picture of who our God is, that he is higher, that he is greater, that he is immeasurable and incalculable, and, and he owns it all. It all belongs to him. It's all his church. It's all his. So the first thing that we need to do is to recognize that it's all his to truly experience liftoff in our lives spiritually. Because if we don't think it's all his, then we'll be distracted by everything and everyone and every issue and things that we shouldn't be distracted by. And that is why it is all his. It is all his, even us. Even us. We are all his. The second thing that I see here is that, that God calls us to press in to purity. We need to recognize that we should be pressing in to purity. And now purity is, is a lost art. It's a lost word. It's one of those things that you probably haven't heard in a long time, um, unless you go back to our Ask the Pastor series when I shared about it, um, speaking from Philippians chapter 4. But, but purity is something we just don't talk about often. And we think about innocence or, you know, a baby or, or something like that. But, but in the, the verses 3 through 6, we are told that we should have pure hands and pure hearts. It's the first thing in this, this passage here to press into purity. The king desires for us to be pure. Along that journey, we have to climb this mountain, and, and we need to do this together. This is something that, that it's, <clears throat> it's impossible to do on your own. Even with other people, it can be hard. So, so we need God's help. And, and sometimes we have mountains that we have to climb, and I want to ask this. What are the mountains in your life that you need to climb right now, church? What are the mountains in your life that you need to climb? For some of us, it might be overcoming fear. For some of us, there may be a mountain in, your, in our marriage that we just, we have to climb. It's, we, we've resisted too long, and it is time to climb that mountain and have that conversation. For some of us, there's, there's mountains of comfort in our life where we just want to sit in front of a TV and be comfortable and not do the things that we know we need to, be, to do, whether it's responsibilities to um, our children or our job or the, the spiritual disciplines, the sacred routines that God has called us to, we all probably have a mountain in our life that, that God is calling us to, to climb right now. Together, God asks in Psalm 24 that we would ascend the hill of the Lord. And this refers again back to, to Mount Zion. If you hear the hill of the Lord, the mountain of the Lord, and it was a place where they would, Israel would go up and they would, would meet with God. But but God desires for us to be pure in hands and heart. And what that means, and to be pure in our hands, is to be pure in our actions. It means to remain unstained from sin. That is, that we don't commit willingly any sin, and that we don't fall into any sin that, that, is, that is of omission. 
So you could not do anything wrong in your life, church. You could not actively sin, but there are things that God calls us to as individuals and as a church that if we disobey, it's sin. Disobedience is still sin, so, so it's, not, it's not just our, keeping our hands uh, unstained. It's, it's being committed to the work that God has for you. So for those of you that, that are in a secular place of work, which is almost everybody in the church, what is God calling you to do in your place of work? Who is God calling you to influence? What is the action that, that God wants you to take? Because it's not just like, you know, if you want to curse at your coworker or punch him in the face or something, I'm sure that people feel like that sometimes. It's not just saying not to do that, but are you setting the example you should set? Are you sharing the hope that you have in Jesus with them. So we are called to be pure in hands, and secondly, pure in heart. That is, that our thoughts and our motives should line up with the Bible, the things that that it says in obedience to God's word. So we are called to be pure in hands and pure in heart. That is our thoughts and our motives. This passage also talks about not worshiping idols. Man, we have got a lot of idols in our culture. We have got a lot of them. Just, just trying to think about some of the big idols that we have in, in America. We have an idol of money in our culture where you can never get enough. And, and I remember one of the, the, the things that, that you'll, I like to say is, is I remember hearing a story of, of Rockefeller. And at one point, he controlled some in, in, insane percentage of the world's wealth. And the interviewer asked him, how much more money do you need? how much more money do you need? And his answer was one dollar more. So no matter how much money he had, he would always need one dollar more. And that's the thing that our culture tries to tell you. You have to have the nicest car, biggest house, nicest stuff, like all of your possessions. You you have to, you know, if you don't have, if you can't keep up with the Joneses, then you you need more money. And, you know, you have to have this massive, you know, savings account and and all that. And now you should be wise. You should save money. You should have money for retirement. You should have cars that work and things like that. But that's not what our culture tells us. Our culture tells us that you need one dollar more. One dollar more. It's an idol in our culture. The other thing that's a huge idol in our culture is sex. And right, sex sells. And I remember as a teenager watching commercials for like you know, refrigerators and, you know, anything from, like, shampoo or, like, a, you know, a new garden hose or something, and it's, it's always people in skimpy outfits that you have no idea why they're selling that product, because that sells. It's, it's what people remember. It's, it's actually hardwired into the brains of most people, and that's why our culture is over- sexualized. And this is one of the idols that God warns us here. If we ever want to experience liftoff spiritually, if we want to break from the routine and the things that hold us down, God is telling us that as we have pure hands and pure hearts, these are the people that, that God is calling to be with him, to stand before him. We, we need to break those things off. The, the over-sexualization in our culture is an idol for far too many people. The next thing, and this has become, this is one of the subtle idols in America. One of the subtle idols in America is comfort. It's comfort. We, we feel like, you know, we, we work too much, and, you know, if we, once we do our 40 hours a week, then we're done, and, and you know, we, if we were, we just want to, again, you know, we want to just sit in front of a TV or in front of our smartphone and and just type away or, or do that kind of stuff. And you see it now more and more everywhere you look. I'm, I'm seeing, and it's cool because I'm seeing a lot of people is uh, out at outdoor seating, eating at restaurants, and, and you'd think that people would be happy to see each other or be around people again. But I still see people enslaved to their phones. And now maybe they're doing important work or maybe they have a loved one who's sick, but, but I'm willing to bet 99% of the time, it's that people are addicted to their comforts. And one of those comforts is, is just mindlessly scrolling on a cell phone. Church, we can't, we can't afford to be in this, have this mindset. We can't afford to, to worship the idol of comfort in our lives. 
especially not when what God calls us to is so much better. It's so much better. God wants for us so much. God wants to use us so much. If that's us, then let's shake off that, that idol of comfort in our lives. And the next thing that I, that's really just exploded over the last, you know, last while is, man, politics has become an idol in our country. Politics has become an idol in our country. I want, I want to share a secret with you. And some of you may know this. Whatever side of the political party you fall on, no one's going to save anyone there. There's no one that's going to bring salvation there. But we can do that. God chooses to use us. And, it's, it's, and I, I get the temptation that we, we demonize the other side and we think they're this bad and, and we, you know, we just need an outlet for our frustration and we want to get something out there and say something. And, and honestly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. What God wants for us, for, for those of us that are his children, for those of us that, that consider themselves Christians, we follow Jesus, God wants us to see every person as a child of God. God wants us to see every person as someone that hasn't had the opportunity to meet Jesus yet. So as long as we worship at the, the idol of Paul, and now I'm not saying don't be involved or don't have, there, there are things that we should be involved in as Christians. There are things that we should support and things that we shouldn't support. But don't get it confused. No matter how much you love or hate our current president or our last president, they are not going to bring any meaningful change to desperate souls that need Jesus. Only we can do that, church. So I'm not saying don't be involved. What I'm saying is don't let it become an idol. So these are just some of the big idols that I see in, in America in this day and age. And, and what it says here is if, if we can do this, for those of us that have clean hands, that have pure hearts, that don't worship idols, that don't tell lies, I mean, I think that's pretty straightforward. A lie is something that's not the truth. Then we will receive the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord, and that, that word translates as favor, that you will experience the favor of God, and you will have right relationship with God. And the last, the last verse 6 says, this is the people that will seek him, and that will worship in his presence. Church, this is so what I desire for us, is, is that we will cast aside the idols, that we will have pure hands and pure hearts, and that we will be the church that the world is desperately looking for. One that is truly seeking God above anything else in all the world. That's what God wants for us. There was a quote I saw from... Um, Spurgeon that I really liked, and, and this is what he says about the hill of God. It says this, it is true the hill is steep, but God is omnipotent. It is certain the hill is high, but higher still is the love and grace of God. He knows you, he carried you, and he will carry you even to the end. When you cannot walk, he will take you in his arms, and when the road is rough that you cannot even creep along it, he will carry you as on eagle's wings till he brings you his promised rest. Till he brings you his promised rest. Church, we, we can't do this on our, in our own strength. We're not going to be able to ascend the hill of the Lord, the climb the mountain of God. We're not going to be able to do that just in our own strength. And, and we're especially not going to be able to do that when we are entangled in the things of this world. If we can't remember that it's all his, if we're stuck on, on idols that shouldn't be, but it's what God wants, and, and he will help us in this pursuit. And the, the last thing that I see here is we should fling wide the gates. Fling wide the gates. And, and it, you could reread verses 7 through 10. And what this is basically saying is to let the king of glory in. So what this would have looked like is, is there would be a gate that was vertical instead of horizontal, and the vertical gate would be a quick close gate in case intruders were coming in. And the, the other thing is that it would be lifted up when the king returned from, from battle, that he returned victoriously. And so, so this here, that you would have to, Israel would have to literally open the gate 
to let the king in. And this is what God is asking us to do. As we recognize that it's all his, as we um, pursue purity, as we press into to purity, what we are doing is we are opening the gate, the spiritual gate to our lives, and we're f- opening it wide to say, God, here I am. God, have your way. God, I am ready to live my life for the king, the king of glory. And I want to experience the king of glory in a greater capacity in my life. And, and, and it's one thing to look at my life and to say, well, this is sort of what I do for a living. Um, I went to get my education and conferences and, and I, all these experiences. But church, it's never enough. I can tell you this about desiring God, about, about experiencing liftoff spiritually. The more you get, the more you want. The more you get, the more you want. It's not, it's not like when you have a little more of God in your life, when you experience a little bit of liftoff, then you're like, okay, you know, I'm satisfied there. I've got just a little bit. No, it's, it's the opposite. With, with our physical appetite, when you eat, you're satisfied. With your spiritual appetite, the more you eat, the more you want. You can never get enough of, of the being with the king. You can never have enough of being in the king's presence. You can never experience this king of glory enough. And it's my challenge to us this morning as a church to fling wide the gates of your life and let God do in your life and through your life what only he can do. So, so as we, as, again, as we recognize it's all his and we press into purity, in this text here, it, this is what it's telling us. When I mention that we can't do it on, on our own, this is telling us to rely on his strength and not our own because he is our victorious king, that we let him fight our battles and not us. Again, you can apply this right back to the idols. There are idols that, that we need to let God fight. Because the the word of God says it very wisely. Hear this, church. The anger of man has never produced the righteousness of God. And there are a lot of things out there that we could be angry at, but but we need to let God fight our battles. Now, that doesn't mean sitting by passively doing nothing. Hopefully, you're praying about it. Hopefully, you're you're, you're ready to, to, to do what he asks of you. But we sing it, right? We, this is how I fight my battles. We, we worship God, acknowledging that he will fight for us. So let's fight in his strength, not our own. Let's fight in the strength of the king of glory and not on our own. Victory is in him and he is our glorious king. So I ask this morning, church, are the gates of your life wide open so that the king of glory can come in? Because he wants to. Church, he so longs to. He so longs to. So let the king of glory into your life. In closing, I just want to say this, and this is what I want to ask, and this is my challenge for you this morning, that you would join us for the journey that you would join us for the journey. Church, we'll be meeting again soon, and soon I'll be able to walk over here and see some some beautiful faces, and then I'll be able to walk over here, and I'll be able to see some beautiful faces, and and I can't wait to to be together again. I haven't had a service with people here yet, so so I'm really looking forward to that. So we'll we'll be together, but this is what, what I think God wants for us as a church, that as we experience spiritual liftoff, in our lives, that there are so many other people in the surrounding area that want to get on board. But first, we need to own this and model this. We need to recognize that it is all his. We need to press into purity, open the gates of our life wide. So join us for the journey. So at the start, I just talked about the Tesla launch. They launched a rocket. And, and one of the crazy things is that you may not have heard, or maybe you had, the day before they launched the rocket, they did another rocket test, and it exploded. It literally, like, there was this huge explosion. You can go find it online. Now, it was unmanned, and supposedly it was a test because they wanted to see how far they could push their rocket until it exploded. 
which that's a, sounds like a pretty big waste of money, but I guess that's important info to know how far you could, could push something before it breaks down. But it exploded. It exploded. Man, I, I just, as soon as I saw this, I was like, I, I could, this is exactly what I'm thinking. This is what happens so often to Christians, is that, is that they're getting ready for this spiritual liftoff, this takeoff, and and, and, it's, and it's like you start to do these things. We start to um, just recognize that it's all his. And, and we start to press in to purity. And, and we start to open the, the gate of our lives the way God wants us to. And there's an explosion of some sort, right? There's this explosion and it hinders the takeoff. It totally shuts it down. It totally shuts it down. And what does that explosion look like? I, I can tell you this, and, and now my wife and I have gotten very good at this, but, but we have never argued more about socks or like something totally insignificant than like the morning before church, right? All right, come on. Can I get a witness out there? All right, you guys know what I'm talking about. You're on the way to church and like your, your kids, you're wondering if they are possessed because they are having such a difficult time wanting to come to church and they just want to stay home, or, or maybe you feel like you have to stay home, or, or maybe, you know, you get a speeding ticket, right? And it just totally just, just takes the fuel out of the engine, or it just totally, it just causes this explosion. These are the things that we need to watch out for in our lives, because right before takeoff, and, and, and even sometimes after takeoff, right? You, you're on this spiritual high with God. You, you, you go through a couple weeks where you're in your Bible every day and, and you start to hear God speaking to you again. And then all of a sudden, it stops. There's this, this thing that just, it explodes and it totally breaks your routine because it broke your heart. It breaks your routine because it broke your heart. Or, or whatever it is, you can fill in the blank. You know what I'm talking about, church. So this is what I'm asking for, for us, for you as individuals, and for, for us as a church, is that you would experience this takeoff and that you would join us for the journey. That you would join us for the journey. And be careful because the Word of God tells us that Satan goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And, and this, he's looking, you know, who, who's, who's taking off right now that, that maybe I can sow some discord into where there can be an explosion or, or who's just getting ready for their breakthrough where they are getting ready for liftoff. And, and I can shut that liftoff down. Beware of it, church, because it's going to happen. I can only tell you because I've experienced it a thousand times in my life. So if, if you are, feel like maybe you are ready for this this morning, you're ready to say, Pastor Ken, I want to join us. I want to join you for the journey. I'm going to pray for you in a moment. And if you're watching this morning and you're like, hey, you know, that, that speaker sounded sort of cool, but I don't really understand what he's talking about. What I want you to understand is, is that God has a plan for your life, that Jesus came to this, this earth to, to die for your sin, to forgive your sin. And the Bible tells us that we're all sinners and we all fall short of God's glory. But the good news is that, that while we were in our sin, Jesus died for us, for our sin, so that we could have eternity with him. I want to pray for you this morning, church. I want to pray for you this morning. Will you pray with me? Lord, I just thank you so much, God, that you desire for us to experience liftoff in our lives spiritually. God, help us to recognize that it's all yours. Lord, I ask, God, that you would help us to press into purity, God, that we would have clean hands and, and pure hearts, God, that we wouldn't lie or swear by what is false, God, and that, that we, we would get rid of any idols in our life and that you would be first and foremost. And Lord, that we would open the gate of our lives. Lord, as we see, Lord, in history, as a city would do as its king returns, Lord, we open our lives to you. God, I also just ask for anyone out there that, that watched today and that's curious about this Christian thing, Lord, I, I just ask, God, that you would be with them, that you would speak to them. God, that, that you would just carry them and draw them closer to you. And Lord, that we wouldn't allow the, the explosions 
to sabotage the work that you're doing in and through us. Thank you for this now, Lord. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, if you prayed either of those prayers, I'm going to ask that you would just send me, send me a message at my email. We can throw my email link at the bottom of the screen and would, would love to hear from you, especially if you're curious about what it means to be a Christian and you'd, you're like, I, you don't know me. It's okay. Send me, send me an email. I would love to chat with you. And, and church, I just want to encourage you. Join us for the journey. It'll be the most worthwhile thing that you do. Um, For any of you interested in going to Scotland, we're going to be having a Zoom call in a little bit, and I hope you'll join us. God bless you guys. Have a great day.